Oh yeah. Where do I even start? It has been so long. Okay, Bex, you can do this. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to this video and welcome to a mahoosive update from me. I have been off YouTube for quite a while. I think it's been over four months and the irony is the last video I uploaded was on the 20th of June and on that day my whole life turned upside down for so many reasons. Reasons that I won't get into on this video, very personal matters. If you've been following me on Instagram, you may have an insight into what's happened, kind of the personal stuff that's been going on, where my head has been at. And if you listen to my recent podcast episode, I go into things in a bit more detail with regards to how I've been feeling, the trauma I faced, therapy, lots of things. But for the purpose of this video, I wanna give you guys an update with regards to fitness, because that's why I've always shown up on YouTube is to share with you my fitness journey, my aspirations, my goals, what I'm doing moving forward. And the last video I uploaded, I was on a mini cut and I was doing pretty well. And I'm now starting this video and I'm also on a mini cut. Okay, so let's backtrack. On the 20th of June, I was on a mini cut. Dieting was going well. I was still remaining strong in the gym, dropping body fat. And I wasn't completely honest with you guys in the video because I was on a mini cut saying that I was just kind of dieting to see where I was at, maybe look if I wanted to, to grow some more. But honestly, I think I had already decided that I wanted to be on prep and was gonna aim for shows towards the end of the year. Now, for life circumstances and shit that went down, that didn't happen for obvious reasons. You know, we're now in November. It's November the 9th. I haven't competed. I'm not planning on competing this year, but I am back on a mini cut and I'm feeling really good, which I'll get into in a second. But since the 20th of June, life, as I said, was completely turned upside down. Um, and I started questioning a lot and there was a lot of stuff that went on, which caused me a lot of pain, a lot of heartache. And I questioned everything in my life my marriage, my decisions I've made, moving to Dubai, business, my goals in terms of fitness, chasing after my pro card for so long. And whilst I was going through all of this, I just, I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep. My training just went to shit. And I came off social media completely. Not only did I abandon YouTube, I didn't record a podcast for months. And I actually, whilst I was going through so much pain and so much heartache, I just couldn't show up on my Instagram either. Um, and so I kind of said to myself, well, if you can't show up authentically, don't show up at all. So I just planned all of my social media posts around clients, old photos, things like that. I just didn't want to show what was going on in my life, how I was looking, how I was feeling, because everything was just shit, to be honest. However, <laughs> I don't want the whole tone of this video to be somber. Things are in a much better place now. I'm in a better place now. But in that time, over the last four months, I've taken a lot of time to reflect on my life. I've been through a lot. I took some time away on my own. I went to Zanzibar for five days, which was absolutely incredible. First holiday I've taken on my own in I don't know how many years but I needed it. I needed it to process. I needed it to really figure out what I wanted to do moving forward. And I journaled a lot. Um, and when I came back from Zanzibar, I decided to seek professional help, therapy, to start my healing journey and really start to unpick all what was going on, how I was feeling and what I needed to do moving forward. And like I said, I've explained a lot of this in more detail on my podcast. I have started writing my book again, and even that's taken a bit of a turn, and I'm going to have to include some of these details in my book, because my book is not only like a self-help 
kind of personal journey book, but it includes a lot of my life and there's a bit of a, a memoir. So I can't not include this. So that, you know, you will find out more about what I've been through if you don't already know in the book on my podcast. But when I came back from Zanzibar and I sought therapy, it was fucking hard. First time I've ever seen a therapist, which is weird because my whole life revolves around me being a coach and supporting others. And it was only when this thing happened that I realized I wasn't supporting myself. I wasn't looking after myself mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And so going through therapy taught me an awful lot about how I spent my time, where my energy was focused, not putting myself first, not looking after my own well-being. Um, and so once I'd been through therapy, done a few sessions, I started to kind of get back to myself, not my old self, more so a new self moving forward. And it's made me really restructure how I do things and kind of change my schedule and change my mindset and I've always been a very reflective person and I'm very much a believer in we're always evolving, growing, learning, developing and this has just taken it to another level and so a lot has changed in the last four months. I have restructured how I work to ensure that I have a bit more downtime and time to myself. My check-ins with my clients are now split across the week, not on one solid day. I've pulled back on the amount of clients I business coach to again give me a bit more time to myself. I still have all the same business goals and ambitions and drive moving forward, but my goals around competing and bodybuilding have kind of shifted a little bit. I started to kind of assess what it meant to me, why I was doing it, and I started thinking realistically about the longevity of this sport. You know, I'm 37. I just had my 37th birthday in October and I'm realistic like I know I've grown a lot of muscle over the years and I only started bodybuilding like what eight nine ten years ago I'm never gonna make it to the Olympia stage even if I was fortunate enough to earn my pro card I'm not in a position where I want to push my body to that level of growth I don't want to push food anymore I don't want to get a huge amount bigger I definitely don't want to push drugs to the level that a lot of these pros do and that's my personal decision. You know, I want to have a family in future. I want to remain feminine. I like the way I currently look. And the reason I'm kind of doing a mini cut now is for no other reason, just to feel a bit more body confident. Yes, it's a little bit for vanity reasons, but I'm just sick of feeling really full, really heavy and uncomfortable. And I just want to get back to being my happy kind of healthy, moderate self, if that makes any sense whatsoever. So I'm three weeks into this mini cut now. I've dropped nearly eight pounds. Most would think I'm dieting quite heavily, like I'm on about 1600, 1700 calories. I'm doing an hour of cardio a day, which is split across morning and post-workout. But for me, it doesn't feel like I'm dieting, like I feel satiated with my meals. I've changed what I'm eating. Maybe I will show you that in another vlog if you guys are interested. Um, but I've steadily been dropping weight, which is really good. And I'm pleased because when I went through what I went through and I wasn't eating, I couldn't train and I wasn't sleeping, my weight just plummeted. And I tried to then reverse out and get into a place where I could build my calories back up again. And as I was doing that, I was feeling more and more uncomfortable. My body was responding and my weight was going back up and I kind of sat about 170 pounds, which was good. Uh, training kind of performance went back up. I was feeling strong again in the gym, but I just, I just wasn't happy with the way that I was looking and feeling. So I'm now down to 162.4. I checked in this morning. It is Wednesday, the 9th of November. Maybe I should have said that at the start of the video. <laughs> I really should have planned this out a little bit more. I also went through kind of a physical illness as well. And I think that was down to stress from what I went through. And I know what our bodies are like. When we're highly stressed, our body will always respond and tell us that it's not happy. And I had a pretty severe kidney infection, which I didn't know at the time. And it really knocked me for six. So I spent two weeks on antibiotics. I couldn't train for two weeks. So now being on this kind of mini cut and being able to kind of make progress and feeling strong and getting a little bit leaner and stuff is, is really putting me in a good headspace. 
but yeah, um, I've been through a lot over the last four months and I'm hoping that this video will kind of just give you a quick update, let you know where my head is at. Do I ever want to compete again? I honestly don't know. I say yes, like I'd love to do it again, like one last season, but I don't know. I'm going to see how I feel at the end of this mini cut. You know, it's six weeks until the Olympia. Darren is competing in the Olympia. He's on prep right now. He's in all of the prep fields. So me dieting right now is, is pretty easy and it kind of just helps the situation at home. However, with a big weight drop today, he has instructed me to have more food. I have had a refeed last week when I dropped weight, but today I need to eat a bit more. Um, and this is something that I am battling with myself in terms of something I share with my clients all the time. Like when you have big drops in weight, you need to implement a little bit more food to bring up your calories across the week to push on for another hard week ahead. But I think my last refeed, I was very tame. I literally just had a sensible meal off plan. I had a cookie and some extra granola in one of my meals and that was it. And then I've had like a 2.6 pound drop this week again. So I think today <laughs> he wants me to put in like 200 extra grams of carbs and then a free meal. So I have no idea what I'm gonna have. Um, if you're watching my Instagram stories, I'll be sharing it on there. I might put it in this vlog, I might not. I don't know, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I think I wanna get back on YouTube and, and share more fitness content and show you that I am still alive. I am well. I'm doing a lot, lot better. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, head over there now because that's where I share everything in terms of my life and where I'm at. And I'm also documenting a lot of my healing journey on there too. But yeah, it's been so long. This feels really weird. Maybe I'll get a bit more confident in front of the camera. And I think I've been hesitant to kind of pick it up and share because I've just not been in a good headspace mentally. But I'm feeling a lot better now and I have a lot of people to thank for that. You know, I was going through a very, very dark time and there were very few people that were in my corner and reached out to me and could see that something was up and it, it meant a lot. And those people closest to me are the ones that pushed me to go and seek help. And the therapy I had during that time was really helpful. I had four or five sessions, which kind of aided me on my healing journey. But now I'm in a place where I'm not sad. I don't feel depressed. I'm not crying all the time. I'm still dealing with what happened. And I am still working through some things, which is gonna take a long time. But what I've realized during this time is that I have my own demons that I need to battle and my own kind of behaviors and conditioning, I suppose is the best way to describe this and programming of how I respond to things. And that's something that I really wanna get into with another therapist, probably one that's more related to that type of work rather than just kind of general counseling and kind of therapy around dealing with trauma. I think I want one that's more targeted towards kind of like psychotherapy and psychodynamic therapy, which really gets into asking me some of those questions that I'm not asking myself because I am a very strong person. And when I go through hard shit, I just push it to one side and I just plow on. And the reason I sought therapy was because I just couldn't cry. I couldn't feel, I couldn't process what was happening. And that's not fucking normal. But anyway, on to a more positive note, things are in a much better place and I'm feeling more positive about the future, enjoying this mini cut, training is going well, um, things at home are much, much better. And yeah, business is good. My clients are doing really well. And do you know what? It was business that actually got me through that hard time because as much as I didn't want to show up on social media for myself, I couldn't just go into a hole and just die under the covers in a bed. I had to show up. I had clients that were competing um, and checking in with me daily. I had business calls with clients. And you know, when you go through something really hard, you just want to hide away and I couldn't. So I had to show up for my clients. I had to be there for business but what I'm starting to realize or what I have already realized and implemented is that I need more life balance. I need to understand it's okay to not feel strong all the time and I need to make sure that I put myself first. So what I'm doing right now is showing up here for you guys to tell you where I'm at, what I'm doing 
and hopefully I'll be able to pick up the camera a little bit more moving forward and maybe even vlog a little bit of today. In fact, yes, I think I'll do that. So today I had my normal first meal, which is 40 grams of cream of rice, 50 grams of blueberries. I had 100 grams of egg whites, two whole eggs, and that's been my same breakfast every single day for the last three weeks. I'm gonna have another meal now, which is a combination of two meals, which is like whey, rice cakes, nut butter, banana. I'm gonna have my normal lunch, which I'll show you. And then I'll probably have some kind of sweet treat this afternoon because hubby and I are heading out to a little cafe, which we like, and they have some like really nice little kind of sweet treats. So I might have something there with a the coffee. And then I'm gonna implement a free meal tonight. God only knows what it is because right now I'm in that headspace where I'm a bit scared of food, which is bloody stupid. I need to be fine to be able to eat and then we'll make progress. So I will try and show you on this vlog. Let's do it. And for anyone that's wondering, yep, the pups are doing fine. Milo's in his normal spot, chilling. He knows I'm gonna sit down there and do a bit of work on my book in a second. Coco is getting much, much bigger. You're not so much a pup anymore. You're a big girl, aren't you? And Milo has his birthday very soon. Oh, you're gonna be two. And mummy's already ordered you some special treats. And little Stitchy is still Stitch. Yeah. Okay, let's get this next meal. So as I mentioned, the next meal I'm having is a combination of two meals on my plan. 30 grams away, 100 grams of banana blended, and then two rice cakes and 30 grams of nut butter. And it's just a smooth peanut butter. I normally have these separately. So I normally have a post-workout shake and banana, not cream of rice. And then I normally have this somewhere in the afternoon. But I'm combining these two because I'm adding in some extra food today. And yeah, that's where we're at. Coco, you need to move. Oy. The struggle is real. Anytime I come and sit on the sofa, they just want to be so close. Come on, Milo, you can do it. You can do it. Strong boy. Yes, you did it. Well done. Okay, now we can assume the position. Oh my goodness me. I'll just close that blind a little bit. That's better. So I'm now sat on the sofa, about to attack a little bit more of my book. I'm really enjoying this writing process. And as I mentioned earlier, I've changed my schedule around. So I have Saturdays completely off work. Sunday, I only have team calls. And then Monday through Friday, check-ins come through. I respond to them in 24 hours which spreads all of my check-ins out rather than doing them all in one day. And it also actually gives me time to write in my book 30 minutes to an hour a day, which is just really nice because it just keeps it ticking along. And I am four chapters down. I've written 40,000 words already, which is crazy. And I've reread through the chapters and edited them and tweaked them. So now I'm kind of working on chapter five and yeah. I think I've got a little bit more time today because Darren's at the gym, he's got a PT client, then he's got to get steps in. Until he comes home, I think I'm just going to do a little bit of writing my book. And then I will pick you guys up and show you what I'm having for my third meal of the day. It's a couple of hours later, just coming up to 1 p.m. This is the next meal that I'm having, which is a regular on my meal plan. So it's a whole wheat wrap, a big one. And then I fill it with 100 grams of chicken or tuna, or turkey mince, I've got turkey mince in there, lettuce, 50 grams of avocado, and then sriracha and light mayo on top. But I absolutely love this meal. It honestly tastes like I'm eating Nando's every time I have it. It's just gone 2 p.m., hubby's home, and we were gonna go out to the Sketch Cafe, and I was potentially gonna get a little treat there, but he's just come back and brought me a My Cookie Dealer cookie. It's a protein cookie. They are new in Dubai, uh, being stocked at one of the local uh, pharmacies that we get stuff from. And yeah, so I think I'm just gonna order in a coffee and have this, and then we'll probably head to the Sketch Cafe a little bit later, and then I'll get a free meal tonight. Still don't know what I fancy though. Aaron has just had his next meal, and he's on a bit of a refeed today, because he's at his lowest weight. And I'm gonna have 
this cookie, but I'm not sure whether to heat it up in the microwave or not. And I ordered myself the same as I did my last little refeed last week, which is a pumpkin spice cold brew, which is very, very nice. It is made with cream, which I don't normally have. Can upset my tummy a little bit, but it tastes unreal. Okay, so I heated it for 20 seconds in the microwave. It's gone a little bit gooey. Looks kind of like this. <laughs> Very crumbly. Okay, that's actually quite good. And heated up was definitely the right option. Because the chocolate melts. Mmm. Very good. I'm going to eat some now, watch an episode of something, and then we're going to head out. So just home now from the Sketch Cafe, we've got two more cups to add to our collection and on the way home I ordered some food for tonight. I spent, I spent all day trying to think about what I fancied eating so I've ordered a burger, some chicken tenders which are like zata flavoured and some spicy masala fries from a new place called Drip Burgers which I've never tried. Um, and I haven't had like burger and fries and stuff for ages so I thought I'd have that. And what I'm gonna do is insert it into the video now because I wanna get changed into my pajamas. I wanna watch a movie with hubby. I wanna chill, but thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you found it useful and it's given you some insight into where my head has been at and what I'm doing moving forward. I will promise to get back to vlogging a little bit more regular, probably not every week, but maybe every couple of weeks. But thanks again for watching guys and I will see you all soon. And yes, that is the dogs eating their dinner because we were out for three hours and they're absolutely starving catch you in the next one guys bye